Hello, everyone. My name is Anderson Rangel. I'm Apex Solutions Engineer for Redgate. And today, the objective of today is to help professionals that are already using SQL change automation to take a step further and start to embrace the test-driven development framework. So we'll achieve that. Um, pretty, we're going to follow. Uh, we do have a article that walks us through how to set up that test project and how to incorporate that into our uh, CI, CD pipelines, but nothing like a good video demonstrating all of those steps. I will be using Azure DevOps, and I do have a uh, test-driven development project that I've just created. And in SSMS or Visual Studio, if you prefer, I also have a project for my database code. So that part of um, the process is already in place. We're going to have a next step and create a new project that are exclusive for my tests. So let's get to that. First step, obviously, is to create a new project. So that's precisely what I'm going to do. I'm going to give that a name. Let's call it TDD. Uh, let's call it TCOT. And for the folder structure, I'm going to select the same repository location that I've cloned from Azure DevOps. So I went to Azure DevOps and copied to my local development workspace. I've cloned this repository. So that repository can be found somewhere in my repos folder. So there you go. I have the, the database code already source controlled. And what I want to do is create a new folder structure exclusive to my tests. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that repository folder. And for the development source, I'm going to select the same database. I'm going to select the TDD3 uh, dev. Perfect. Now, this part is quite important, right? Because here we can define what filters we want for my database. So we're going to have two distinct projects. On my database code, I'm already saying, look, anything that is to do with TCOT tests, I'm going to ignore. And on my test projects, I want to do the opposite. I want to just include uh, TCOT related uh, objects. So I do have a filter already in place. I'm just going to open it up here so we see what is in it. And fundamentally, I have um, I have uh, three items here, the TCOT T and the SQL COP schemas. They are the ones that are going to be created um, at this process. But you can have tests put into schemas that are of your preference. So you just add that schema uh, into the filter so it can be included. So I'm only including into this uh, comparison, I'm just picking up objects in this comparison that meet this criteria. Perfect. So I'm going to select that filter, which is in my desktop. And on the comparison object uh, options, what I need to do is untick this uh, here. So here is the ignore comparison options. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm unticking this option because I do want TCOT framework and test objects to be included into that comparison. So that's good to go. On the baseline option, I'm not going to baseline. There is nothing to baseline against. I'm going to go from this point onwards. And I'm going to create my project. So what's going to happen is that a few um, uh, things are going to kick in. I'm just going to. Uh, commit those. Uh, in fact, I don't even need to commit it now. I can wait to commit it later. So let's do that. In fact, 
it's, I want to commit it now. It's just because <laughs> I'm a bit uh, pedantic about that. I like to move changes in stages. It's easier to, it's the best practice in terms of troubleshooting. So I'm just going to make my initial uh, test uh, commit. Let's go with that. So I'm just going to commit and push that. And um, we can now go back and start looking. So I have my project. I have my test project. It's empty. I don't have any actual test library in place that I can use further down the pipeline. So how do we do that? We use what we call the SQL test product, which will allow me to install the T SQL T framework against any particular database. In here, I can see that I have four databases that I am, that I do have a library of tests created against it. So it's a great way for you to manage the library of tests you have against multiple different projects in your organization. For now, all I want is to install the framework, the test framework against my development environment. When I click add database, a few things are going to hit going to be brought to my attention that I need to enable SQL CLR. It's already enabled. I need to set the database to trustworthy own, which is not. We'll do that in a bit. And then after that, the TSQL T framework will be installed. I'm also checking the box here to add the SQL COP static analysis, um, a library of tests for static analysis, which I think it's valuable and it's going to be good to, uh, for us to start this journey. So I'm going to hit OK. This is going to fail because I have not set the um, authorization properly, but I just wanted to go there anyway. So all we need to do to circumvent this obstacle is to uh, change that authorization. And once SSMS decides to go, we will be able to actually do it. So I have a little uh, snippet in place here uh, that will alter the authorization on the database to SA or any other credential, or you could have just logged in with a credential that has sufficient um, rights. So Let's repeat that step. I'm going to add the database. Now it should go and install it successfully. So once that it's done, so what does that mean? Install the TSQL T framework. If you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a library of store procedures and other objects that get added to your database. So if I expand that now, you should be able to see that I will have a load of store procedures. I, and um, and those are what's going to help me manage and drive those tests. If you're concerned about, wait, what I mean, I don't want these objects into my pipeline and going into my uh, uh, going upstream. So you can rest sure that that's not going to happen. We're going to move that into its own project on its own folder in your repository, and that is not going to be progressed uh, down the pipeline. In fact, if I close that and open my, uh, oh, not that one, uh, if I open my database code project, uh, we will see that none of these changes that have been implemented were, uh, uh, are being picked up by uh, my database code project. So it's safe for us to carry on our development without any concerns. So if I go into my, TCO T project, we'll see that it's a different story. I should have a multitude of objects now ready to be uh, source controlled. Checking for changes, whoa, 198 objects. I'm going to generate those migrations. So I'm going to incorporate those objects into my project. And once that is done, I will be able to commit those into source control. There is one point, actually, if I, it's even, oh, I've closed it. It's on that document that I showed in the very beginning. 
because that limitation of having to change the authorization of the database, it's a requirement to install the TCCOT framework, we will or we would encounter that challenge again during CI where we need to build that project from scratch. So to circumvent that at that level, what we need to do is simply create a pre-deployment script that I actually have here in place. There we go. I have this pre-deployment script that will uh, help me change uh, the behavior. And during CI, I will perform those uh, the operation that I did just then. So very simply, all I have to do is create a new script, um, paste this um, uh, script into it, save it, and um, well, I probably could name it a little bit better. So I'll just copy that, bring it in here, rename it, and I'm good to go. So if I go into version control now, I have a new pre-deployment script, which is a script that is going to be executed prior to the deployment. And that will ensure that I will be able to run or deploy my tests against that shadow database during CI. So uh, TCCOT uh, framework, whoop, there you go. So uh, if I could type, it would help. There you go. I'll commit those changes locally, and then I'm pushing those changes to my remote repository. What will happen then is let's jump into Azure DevOps. I'll have a look at my files, and I can see that now I have two folders, one for my actual database code and another one for my TCCOT library of tests. Great stuff. I could even see that I have a pre-deployment script created, which like described, will be ran before that. That push will automatically run a build step. And what I expect is that the build will actually fail during the tests because a number of the tests that comes out of the box don't meet the, well, my code doesn't meet the criteria of those tests. And then I'll be faced with two options. One, which is, um, well, not what we should be doing. We should be deleting the tests if it fails. We should be adjusting it. But in my case, uh, those tests weren't created, weren't designed for a specific code coverage or a specific uh, code alignment requirement. Um, so what I could do is just go back into my library, delete those tests that have failed my builds, and um, and that would then allow uh, the code to go forward successfully. Silly me, just realized um, a pretty pretty fundamental um, uh, condition. So my code didn't fail, and I I will show you why it didn't fail. It didn't fail because I actually did not um, configure the test to be executed. Silly me, silly me, apologies in advance, but all is good. There is always a way to get around that. So here I have it in my CI, I have a single step that is building the code for me. So that's fine. I have validated that that works. So I'm gonna create an additional step and I'm gonna say that this is where I'm gonna test the build artifact. There you go. Um, and instead of building a SQL change automation project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a SQL change automation project using TCCO T tests. I'm not going to use my project file in this database called project file. I'm actually going to use the project file in my TCCO T folder. And that's it. So just confirm that everything is fine and it is. So when I save this and queue a new build, now we should see that in that test step, we should see that 
uh, failing. So what I will do is I'll quickly pause. For you will be a blink, but I will be back once that's And there we have it. So 82% of the tests have passed, the rest have failed. I can see here all the tests that actually have failed. So my next action is to remediate this. Like I said, this was expected. And what I will do is show that as a developer, this is one great uh, capability that is added to, uh, to our development lifecycle, which is I don't have to wait until CI to validate if my test would have worked or not, if my code would have passed the test or not. I can actually come over here, find that uh, the library of tests that I have against my database, and I can run those tests. So over here, I would see all those tests that actually have failed. And I could, like I said, go back, hopefully in the real world, we would go back and just fix the code. So um, it actually meets the test criteria. But what I will do is um, simply delete those tests. So I'll do that uh, now. I'll pause the video, do that, and we can commit some change and see how it goes from there. Great. So I have removed those tests. I can run the battery of tests again. Hopefully, they will go successfully. And then the next step is to commit to the changes. And the changes will be the drop of those uh, store procedures that would that represent those tests. So checking for changes should pick up that I am dropping a number of tests. I'll generate the migrations and commit those to source control. And then what we can do afterwards is actually uh, make a database change uh, to see how that actually goes through. So I'm generating the migrations. And I once that's done, I'm going to just commit that change into source control. So removed um, <laughs> some tests. That will do. So I'm going to push that to source control. And like before, that will trigger the build. Because I'm pushing straight to master, that will trigger uh, the, the, the build automation process where my commit will uh, well change the repository and then we're going to try to run those tests again so once again i'm just going to pause it really quick and we'll be back after that is done yay success so 100 percent of the tests have passed if i click on it uh, i should be able to see which ones have gone through um, and what we can do now is, so, so where we are at now. So now I have created a project, a SQL change automation project that is relevant and concerned only about creating and maintaining a library of tests that we're going to run against the build artifacts generated by your database code changes. So let's see how that actually looks like. So once I have created those, so I have my two tests over here, I can come into my, um, I can come into my database and make some changes. Maybe I will add a new column to my customer table. That's a change. I'm gonna open up my database code project and that should pick up that change and I'll generate the migrations and uh, push that into version control. I guess a bit of a, it's not performing as fast as I would like to, but live demos, eh? it has to be like that, I guess. So if I go into version control, add a new column, I'm gonna commit to that and push. And what's gonna happen now is, these codes that I have just developed are gonna go through, we're gonna build and validate the schema with the new change. That's part of the part of the design 
when it comes to when it comes to what we do in CI. But now we're actually going to, we're going to take that a step further. And once that schema validation is finished, on top of that, I'm going to run all of those tests. And we can start to think about what sort of tests should we run. Usually, um, um, from a unit test perspective, we're looking at things like code coverage. So when you write a stop procedure, we should also be writing a, a, a unit test that validates that stored procedure, that helps us write better codes, and that helps protect the codes that we're writing. So let's say a year from now, someone drops a column that that proc depends on, that's, that commits that piece of code that would have broken the proc would fail, and we would know why, and we would allow, would be able to action effectively prior to breaking the code. So that's fundamentally what it is. I will pause the video real quick and show um, the end results of that deployment. Let's see where we are. Might not be, oh, there you go. It's actually already doing the test phase. So this shouldn't take too long, but I'll pause it anyway. You don't have to wait. Great, like expected the tests have passed as well. And what that means is now I have created these build artifacts that I have uh, that, that successfully passed all the tests that I ran against it. Now this build artifact is passed on to the next phase of the process where I'm going to deploy those changes into my test environments and then eventually deploy that to production. Again, quick pause so we don't have to wait. Great. So Changes deployed. Let's see if it actually went through. Moment of truth here. So let me just refresh that. Go to tables, customer, columns, new columns. So the point of the demonstration wasn't the deployments, but uh, it's always good to see uh, the tool performing as, as brilliant as it always does. But um, just a quick recap, this was a demonstration on how to add, um, how to include this, this, for this approach of test-driven development. Redgate uh, approaches that challenge, that obstacle, that, that um, requirement, I should say, by allowing us to create a new project dedicated to the test component of it, include that into our repository, separately from our database code. And on, during CI, as we build our code, build our um, artifacts for deployment, we actually run a battery of tests against that artifact. And if that passes, that is the um, a boost in reliability and confidence that our deployment is on a good path. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, more than happy to engage and, and help you achieve your objectives there. So see you next time.